So in this video, we'll be considering the thermal expansion of solids. So we'll be looking at an equation that we can use to approximately describe how the length of a solid changes as it's heated. Now, a useful picture to have in your head of what a solid looks like for this part is to imagine a solid is made up of atoms. So we can represent these by little circles and they're joined by bonds, which we can represent by little springs. Now, the bonds vibrate and as a solid is heated up and gets hotter and hotter, there's more and more and more vibrations. So to give you an idea of the scales that we're talking about, in a typical solid, the spacing between the atoms is around about an angstrom, which is 10 to the minus 10 meters. The vibrations at room temperature are around about 10 to the minus 11 meters. So as a point of reference, green light, which is right in the middle of the visible spectrum of light, has a wavelength of about 500 nanometers, which is five times 10 to the minus seven meters. So the spacing of atoms in a solid is much smaller than the wavelength of light. Now, this does actually have real world applications. So possibly when you've been driving along a road, you might have seen a metal plate or a shiny black line along the road. Now, this is actually there because as these vibrations get bigger and bigger, they cause the solid to expand. And so in a road, if the road surface is all expanding, it needs somewhere to go to. If there isn't somewhere for that extra length to go to, then the road is going to crack and buckle. So we've got these metal plates in the road with an air gap between them, which gives the road space to expand into. All the shiny black lines are a kind of foamy material which can be compressed without cracking. Now you've possibly also seen this in buildings, especially in buildings built in climates with extreme temperature variations. So these are known as expansion joints, and you may have seen them as kind of a line down the side of the building, like in this example here. So the reason for this is again the same as the road, because as the building heats up, the bricks expand, and we need somewhere for this extra length to go so that the building doesn't crack. Now, being physicists, we like to have an equation that we can use to describe this. So the equation I'm about to present to you is just an approximation. It's not been derived from first principles. It does agree with experimental measurements, at least approximately. So we can write the equation as delta L is equal to alpha times L0 times delta T. Now, in this equation, delta L is the change in length, Alpha is the thermal expansion coefficient, and this is different for different materials. L0 is the initial length of the object, and delta T is the change in temperature. So units in this equation, it's important that delta L and L0 have the same units. These can be any unit for length. So the SI unit is meters, but often you'll see millimeters or centimeters used in this equation. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as those two have the same unit. Now delta T, that's a change in temperature. So it can either be presented in degrees C or in kelvins. These are actually the same for a change in temperature. So we can see that because the change in temperature is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So let's say the initial temperature was one degree C and the final temperature was 11 degrees C. In this case, the change in temperature is the final minus the initial, which is 11 minus one, which is equal to 10 degrees C. Now, let's say that we wanted it in kelvins. Well, in that case, we can put the change in temperature is equal to the final temperature, which in this case is 11 plus 273 
kelvins minus the initial temperature, which is 1 plus 273 kelvins. So you can see when we're working out what the change in temperature is there, we've got the 273 in the first bracket and we've got minus 273 from the second bracket. So those completely cancel out and that'll happen for any temperature. So the change in temperature in kelvins is also 10 kelvins. So for changes in temperature, it doesn't matter if you use degree C or kelvins. And likewise, for the thermal expansion coefficient, this is either per degree C or per Kelvin. Both of these are correct. Now these thermal expansion coefficients are different for different materials. So metals typically have a relatively large thermal expansion coefficient. So for example, aluminium is 24 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C or per Kelvin. Copper is 17 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. Steel is 11 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. Though of course it depends on the exact type of steel, there'll be a bit of variation there. Brass is 19 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C and lead is 29 times 10 to the minus 6. Now these will all be given on your data sheet and in any of the quizzes for this course you should use the values given on that data sheet. Now other materials typically have slightly smaller thermal expansion coefficients. So some common items, concrete is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. Glass is around about 9 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. And Pyrex, which is often used to make bakeware, is around about 3.2 times 10 to the minus 6. Now we can see a nice demonstration of this in action. So in this clip, Neil is putting a high current through a piece of copper wire. So the high current comes from a car battery. And as you're probably aware, if you send a high current through a wire, then it causes the temperature of the wire to increase because of the resistance of that wire. So let's have a look at what happens to the wire as Neil sends the current through it. So here's Neil pushing the button. So the current's starting to flow and you can see that the wire is sagging as it heats up. So the little red flag there makes it easier to see how the wire is moving. And now that Neil's released the button, the wire's cooling down and it's moving back up again. And here it is in close up. You can see what happens when Neil pushes the button, it starts to sag. And then when Neil releases the button, it returns back up as it's cooling down and returning to its contracted length.